Shores Baptist Church. Turn in your hymnals this morning to page 280. 280. I'm seeing visitors all over the place this morning. What's a young man's name? Did you say his name is Grayson? Clayton? What's your name, young man? Come on up here and sing a song for it. I'm joking. <laughs> What's that young man's name? I don't want to embarrass him, but I guess I might have already. Sometime today, Joseph, what's his name? Oh, Grayson. Grayson. Good to have you with us. I know these other two birds up here. Steve. No, no. Alan, Alan. and uh, Cassie. Alan has my middle name. I don't know if he knows that, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's how I can remember him. We're sure glad you could be here this morning. Okay, let's turn to 280 and we'll, we'll start our singing. Dying with Jesus by death reckoned mine, living with Jesus a new life divine, looking to Jesus till glory doth shine, moment by moment, O Lord, I am thine. Sing it out on that chorus. Moment by moment I'm kept in His love. Moment by moment I've life from above. Looking to Jesus till glory doth shine. Moment by moment, O oh Lord, I am thine. Never a trial that not there, never a burden that he doth not bear, never a sorrow that he doth not share, moment by moment I'm under his care, moment by moment I'm kept in his love, moment by moment i've life from above looking to jesus till glory doth shine moment by moment oh lord i am thine on the third never a heartache and never a groan never a teardrop and never a moan, never a danger but there on the throne. Moment by moment, he think of his own. Moment by moment, I'm kept in his love. Moment by moment, I've life from above. Looking to Jesus, Till glory does shine, moment by moment, O oh Lord, I am thine. Okay, now that you're all waking up with the first three verses, let's see if we can hear some voices on that uh, on that fourth stanza. All I'm hearing is myself, and I am not liking it. On the fourth one, sing out, would you? Never a witness that he Robert would pray for us. Would you 
say a prayer for us. Open us up, your brother. Next song, 395. Nice to have that board back. Who put that board up there? Come on, someone take credit for it. I was going to give you an A for the day. <laughs> nice to have that board back. Hey, uh, hopefully the realization of this uh, song will sink into us, huh? Only one Jesus, my Lord and the King. Only one tongue to praise Thee. Thank you, Brother Rick, for leading the music. Welcome to Bible Believers Baptist Church. Verse of the week, Isaiah 35, 1, the wilderness and the sol solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as, as the rose. Thank you for joining us at the Bible Believers Baptist Church. It is our prayer that you will be blessed by the music and the preaching of the Word of God. If you are a first-time guest, please fill out the guest card and drop it off into the offering plate when it goes by. If we can be a service to you, please, do not, please don't, do not hesitate to ask. Bible Believers Baptist Church is an independent, fundamental Baptist church. We are King James Bible only, soul winning, salvation by faith alone and a family integrated. Pastors set aside each week to answer any questions about spiritual matters. Feel free to come talk to him. You can reach him, you can reach him out on via email. <clears throat> Salvations of the years, uh, really cool was that? Uh, 24 so far. 24 salvations so far. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord on that. 24 souls pulled out of the fire. 
We are a family integrated church. Children and infants are always welcome in the church in the church service. We will have mother's baby room available for your convenience during all services. Please no men or children above three years old in the mother's baby room. No unattended children in any area of the building, please. No food in the assembly area. Please reserve the back row for families with young children, rockers or for pregnant, or nursing mothers, and elders only. Please help us keep the building the way we found it. Clean up after yourselves and your family if necessary. Silence all your cell phones, please. Assistance to your vehicles is always available by the ushers. Don't hesitate to ask if you need help to your vehicles. So come ask us, Oscars, uh, ushers, Oscars, ask us, ushers, we'll help you to your vehicle. <clears throat> Church schedules, we use the WhatsApp to, con to coordinate soul winning locations and details. Ask pastor or soul winning leader for more information. That would be Brother Rick and Brother Cody. Sunday, Sunday services, morning service will be 1030 service in the morning, so waiting between time services, evening service at 3.30. Wednesday nights we have so waiting at 4 o'clock, and then we have the evening service at 6. Preaching schedule for this Wednesday, on Wednesdays, the 4th, the 4th, the uh, 30, the 4th, on the 3rd, oh, excuse me, April 3rd, Brother Rick, 10th, Brother Rick will be preaching for us again on the Wednesday services. And on the 17th, Pastor, our pastor will be here preaching for us on the 17th. And Brother Rick again on, on the 24th. That's on Wednesday schedule preaching. And Sunday will be Brother Cody be preaching morning service for us this morning. And Brother Larson will be doing the evening service. And on the 14th, we Brother Larson morning service, and I'll be preaching for you in the evening service on the 14th. And the 21st, Brother Ramey will be here. Pastor Son will be here preaching for us on both services on the 21st. And on 28th, it will be Brother Larson will be preaching for us morning service, and then we have men preaching night on the 28th. And hopefully we have some... Um, more preaching men come up on an evening service that day. It'd be pretty nice if, ever, if the men in here can bring a message for about 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And upcoming events, Sunday, April 7th, Pastor Ian Tavarner, Tav uh, Tav preaching both services in Vancouver, April 8th to 9th, Next Level Youth Conference, at Verity Baptist Church, sign up on their website, ages 13 through 19. Sunday, April 28th, Sure Foundation Baptist Church in Seattle. One year anniversary, guest pastor Bruce Mejia preaching both services. And May 24th and 25th, Chicago soul winning and preaching. So we've got to keep keep that church in prayer for for soul winners that they get more pull more souls out of the fire. And June twentieth and twenty through twenty third, Red Hot Preaching Conference at Verity Baptist Church. And, and we know um I don't mean my family's going and our brother Rick and most of us are going to that Red Hot Preaching Conference and looking forward to that one. Birthdays April ninth. I, uh, Isha, is that, Isaiah, sorry about that, sorry you guys, Isaiah's birthday on the 9th, April 18th, Austin's birthday, April 30th, Robert, Robert's birthday, and they had their, him and his wife had their, uh, anniversary on the 1st, praise the Lord, yep, happy anniversary, and, uh, that's it for the now. And that's it for the bulletin, and give it back over to, uh, to Brother Rick. Okay, 
I think 395, is that our next one? 181, I knew that. 181, 181. Hey, if you want a professional, you gotta pay him. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. 181. Cody usually leads singing. He does a much better job than I do. But he's preaching this morning, and he wants to save his little voice, so I'm preaching. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's got a big voice. 181. Evangelistically speaking. On the last verse. are going to take the offering. Wake up. Let's go. All right. Good job. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. And thank you for allowing us to come into your house and hear your word preached. I ask that you just bless this offering and bless those who offer. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, if you would, open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to read the entire chapter before the sermon, as is our custom. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'll give you a minute to turn there. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, starting in verse 1, and the Bible reads, Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve, through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might, uh, might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, But we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that you might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren, which came from Macedonia, supplied And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And so will I keep myself. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also, for ye suffer fools gladly, seeing you yourselves are wise. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, howbeit whereinsoever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice, Was I beaten with rods? Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger, and thirst, and fastings often, and cold, and nakedness. Beside those that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forever, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Atreus, or Eretus, excuse me, the king kept the city of the Damascus, uh, 
Damascenes with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. Uh, Brother Rick, would you pray for the sermon? Good morning, Bible Believers Baptist Church. It's good to be in the house of God and not a house of fraud this morning. Amen? Amen. In this church, we use God's preserved word in the English-speaking language, and that is the King James Version of the Bible. And if you have any other version, like, for example, the LSB, which really does not stand for the Legacy Standard Bible, as some people think, the LSB actually stands for Lucifer's Satanic Bible. And the title of my sermon is Believe on the Antichrist and Thou Shalt Be Damned. Which is a true saying in context of like end times. If one is to take the mark of the beast, we know that that person is doomed and damned in the end times. And about the mark of the beast, the Bible says no saved Christian will take the mark of the beast because we will not be deceived. The Bible says that the Antichrist will be so convincing that if it was possible, he would deceive the very elect. But it's not possible. But um, some people teach if you take the mark of the beast, that that's an example of somebody that can lose their salvation after being saved. I reject that doctrine because of the fact that the Bible tells us we will not be deceived. He would be so convincing that if it was possible to be deceived, we would, but it is impossible. And John MacArthur has a ministry called Grace to You Ministries. Who's ever heard of John MacArthur? Yeah, he's the guy that shows up after watching any of our, our sermons online, and then his video will pop up, right? And YouTube has become a tool for Satan and cancel culture and the Jew world order. And even if you haven't seen him on YouTube, Brother Robert preached a great sermon rebuking him, I think maybe just even a couple weeks ago. And Pastor Anderson also did a sermon rebuking him. The reason why I want to kind of touch on him a little bit today is because uh, this is twice now in my life that I've got somebody saved, and after they've gotten saved, uh, John MacArthur's YouTube's sink their teeth into these babes in Christ. And it just kind of hurts my heart that, you know, this liar, you know, dupes people. And so I kind of just want to touch on him personally because I've been personally affected this last couple weeks by him. And so, yeah, this clown said that the blood doesn't save you. And if you watch Brother Larson's sermon, he does a deep dive into debunking that heresy. And I've recently watched a few of his sermons, and this guy truly is a false prophet. John McLeyer is a two-tongued snake, pedophile sympathizing, sodomite sympathizing, false prophet, reprobate, child of hell. He is of his father, the devil. His God is not Jesus Christ. His God is Antichrist. And there is two religions in this world, getting to heaven by good works or faith alone in Jesus Christ. Islam, Catholics, Calvinists, Protestants, you name it, Buddhists, Hindu, you name it. They all have a common theme, and that is to serve God and do religious works, and you'll get to heaven, the afterlife, nirvana, or whatever. And there is two types of Christianity, works salvation and faith alone in Jesus. The Bible warns us not to be duped, by a different gospel, another Jesus. We just read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and he said 
He was talking about a different Jesus and another gospel. There's only one Jesus, Brother Cody, and I know that. But the Bible is describing that people will fall for a different Jesus, a version of Jesus that is not the actual Jesus Christ that saved you by faith alone. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. If you could look down at verse 4, please. It says in verse 4, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Paul is saying that he feels like the church at Corinth is so gullible and unlearned that if someone like Paul Washer or Ray Comfort or John McGuire came preaching their version of Jesus, a different Jesus, another Jesus, another gospel, that they might well bear with him. And turn to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. We'll be looking at verse 6 when you get to uh, Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. Verse 6 says, I marvel. I imagine Paul's shocked that they're all so soon removed from the simplicity of Jesus and the gospel unto this different version of Jesus that is not another gospel. It's a perversion of the real gospel. He's... he's He's like, I marvel that you're so soon removed. And in verse 2, he says, which is not another gospel, meaning there's only one gospel. The other gospel is a second gospel. It's different. And there be some that trouble you. This other gospel troubles you. Because this other gospel probably makes people feel unsaved or doubt their salvation. And the real gospel makes you feel secure. And not lost. People need to stop sitting at the tables that Jesus himself would have flipped. All right? This other gospel in verse 7 says that they pervert the gospel of Christ. It's not another gospel or another way to get saved. It's a perverted version of the only gospel is what he's trying to have his audience understand. And that's what I'm trying to have you understand, and that's why I'm using these verses. God saved you. He's not in the process of saving you, okay? Eight, verse 8 and 9 says that if they bring that works-based gospel, let him be cursed. Uh, cursed. Let that man be damned. And I don't know if you notice, but he says it again. He says... And make sure, uh, he says basically, sorry, my phone went off, guys. I, I apologize. I'm going to turn this off real quick. Sorry, guys. I really apologize for that. Anyways, basically he's saying, in case you didn't hear me the first time, let me be loud enough. Maybe I wasn't loud enough. But in case you didn't catch it, let me say it again. Let me repeat myself. If anybody brings a fake works-based gospel, let them go to hell. 
That's what the Bible says. That's not what Cody is saying. This is what the Bible's saying. You can read it for yourself. I'm showing you. Their uh, Calvinists, their philosophy and va vain deceit is that if you get saved in your lifetime, that means you were predestined to it. Uh, meaning like you have no real free will, if that makes sense. God controls everything and, and every, everyone. We Essentially, when you know about what a Calvinist believe, they really don't really believe you have free will. So in other words, they mean you're either born saved or you're born a reprobate is what they're saying. And that's just not what the Bible teaches, guys. There is three types of people. You have the saved, the lost, and the damned, okay? And so basically... Um, it's just not true because the Bible teaches that we have free will. We can choose to be saved. We can choose to call upon the name of the Lord or we can choose not to. And so that affects their, their, their view of free will. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up when you're reading the Bible. And uh, there actually is an instance where God himself said, nor came it into my mind. And don't just take my word for it either, because I could be lying. Go to Jeremiah chapter 32, and we'll be looking at verse 54, Jeremiah 32. <clears throat> the reason why our, church, our churches are like-minded churches like the new IFB, the reason why we show all these verses is to prove to you that the Bible does teach these things that we're saying. And we should prove to ourselves what the Bible says, because first John four, verse one through five says, beloved, believe not, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Basically he's saying, don't believe every spirit, but try test the spirits and see if they are of God. How do you test the spirit? Your Bible. Don't just take a preacher's word for it. Also, check their statement of faith. If you're going to lie to you ministries, go to their statement of faith or any kind of, kind of statement of faith when you're looking for a church to go to. And look and, and, and read between the lines. Are they saved or are they being saved? Because there's a big difference. You should be there in Jeremiah chapter 32. Let's go ahead and look at verse 35. It says, And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Looks like it never came into God's mind. So what, Calvinists? Your doctrine makes no sense. Calvinists are actually workers of iniquity, and so are many other denominations. They say, Lord, Lord, to Jesus. Uh, you know, the list goes on about how many people are, are going to say, Lord, Lord. You know, you got your Catholics, your Pentecostals, Jehovah's Witnesses, Latter-day Saints. I mean, you name it, the list goes on. Go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew's chapter 7, verse 21 through 23 says, Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now the last sermon I did, I rebuked, rebuked Gino Jennings. I showed everyone this verse and the verse that the will of the Father is to believe on Jesus and be saved. That's what doing the will of the Father. The people in Matthew chapter 7 did not do the will of the Father. They did not believe on Jesus Christ for salvation. 
they listed a bunch of works. I want you to notice that because that's very important. And I might not be a smart man, Jennings, but I do know what salvation means. But you can apply that sermon that I preached to John MacArthur or whoever. False prophets take you to Matthew 7 and will use that to teach you could lose your salvation. These people that say, Lord, Lord, know Jesus is God. But they didn't trust in Him for salvation. They trusted in their good works, their behavior, their religious whatever. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not of works at all. Okay? And false prophets boast in their works. And the people that boast in their works are the same ones that use Matthew 7 to twist, to trick the lost into boasting in their good works the day they see Jesus and call Him Lord, Lord. Does that make sense? Is that clicking? You see, Jesus, they will list the good works when they see Jesus and boast in their works, and Jesus will judge them according to their works. And if you work for salvation, you are in debt, and I'll get into that. If you work for salvation, you are in debt, and hell is where you're going to go. You're either saved by faith or you're judged by your works. Go ahead and go to Romans chapter 11, and I'll show you. That man knows his Bible. <laughs> Romans chapter 6, or 11, verse 6. Verse 6 says, And if by grace... Then, it is, then is it no more of works. So if it's by grace, it's not of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. If it's by grace through faith, then it's not of works, is what the Bible's saying. If salvation is about works, then it's not of grace. That's one or the other, folks. Yeah. You're in Romans. Go ahead and go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Look at verse 4. Romans chapter 4, verse 4 says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. See that? You boast in your works, you're going to be judged by your works. And if you are judged by your works to determine if you're going to heaven or not, I mean, I didn't say it. The Bible says it. You're on your way to hell. You owe a debt that you cannot pay, okay? I never knew you, ye workers of iniquity. And then since we're in Romans chapter 4, go ahead and look at verse 5 says, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So if you do no works, but you believe on Jesus, your faith is what's counted for righteousness. Amen. It's easy. Does it say, but to him that worketh and believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness? No. But to him that worketh and believeth, to him that worketh just worketh? No, <laughs> it just says to him that worketh not. But if you believe in Jesus, it's counted for righteousness. It's simple. If you do zero works at all, but you believe on Jesus for salvation, you're saved. Hey. Oh, but Brother Cody, what about a little bit of works in there? Yeah, I, I can understand where people kind of are coming from, but... But even if they had no works at all, period, they're still on their way to heaven. It doesn't matter. If it's, oh, I mean, some of the things you hear is, it's frustrating when you actually know your Bible. Because it's like, you care for the lost, you care for people. You don't want people to go to hell for eternity. 
and, and, and when you realize false prophets are actually worse than a serial killer, worse than a murderer, because they go around showing people lies, and they're going to go to hell forever burning. That is scary. we got to take false prophets just as serious as a serial killer, because it's actually worse than murder to send somebody to hell. I feel bad for these people that are duped by these false prophets. And then they'll attack us like we're hateful because we're preaching the truth and we're passionate about it. We keep it Bible in this church, amen? If you have itchy ears, you are in the wrong church. Let's keep reading. Romans chapter 4, look at verse 6. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Let's look at verse 7. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Romans 4, verse 7 through 8, I'll read it again, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Verse 7 says, past sins are forgiven because forgiven is past tense, right? Then it says, whose sins are covered. That's present. And then finally, verse 8 says, will not impute sin, a.k.a. future, right? So why do these heretics say Jesus will forgive your sins when you get saved, but it's up to you from now on to not sin or you'll lose your salvation? Makes no sense. They trust in, in a Jesus of trusting in your good works for salvation. It's the spirit of Antichrist. It's the devil's deception. Christ paid for all my sins on the cross. I'm a Baptist. The Bible's my boss. Romans chapter 9, you don't have to turn there, but it says, Wherefore they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Every sin that you ever committed was a future sin. So when Jesus went to the cross, why are these wolves teaching a gospel that Roman 9, Romans chapter 9 says is a stumbling stone? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall, uh, believeth on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We are sinners the Bible teaches that nobody can live up to perfection. Two ways to get to heaven. Live completely sinless, which the Bible says there's none that doeth good and sinneth not. So li live completely sinless or believe on Jesus. Fact is, if you have sinned once in the past, you're not considered sinless in the sight of a just and holy God. One sin and an entire lifetime of good deeds is still a sinner in the eyes of a holy God. So that only leaves one option. Believe on Jesus, who did live sinless, because he is the one who lived perfect for us, right? If Jesus hadn't been our Savior, we would all go to hell. Look, I deserve to go to hell. And, you, and some of you might not like this, but I deserve to go to hell, and so do all of you. It's by Jesus' blood and his, his shed blood on the cross. You hear that, John MacArthur? His shed blood on the cross is what saves us. When you get saved, what happens is your sins, Jesus puts it on the cross, and in exchange, he gives you his perfection and sinlessness, and you get his righteousness. Covered by his blood. John MacArthur. John McLiar. And lie to you ministries. There's a switch that happens when a person believes on Christ. And let me give you an example. Say the left side of this building represents um, you as a, as a person. And let's say the right side of this building represents the cross. I need two people, two brave men to come up here with me, please. Brother Austin, Brother Noah. Go ahead and stand right here. And Brother Austin, go ahead and stand right there. So Brother Noah 
Remember, this side stands for the cross. Brother Noah stands for Jesus' sinlessness and perfection and righteousness. Sorry, Brother Austin. But he stands for sin. Okay? And so what happens is, when you get saved, the left side of the building stands for you as a person. And he stands for your sin. The right side is the cross, and he stands for Jesus' salvation. Go ahead and switch positions, guys. When you get saved, what happens is Jesus gives you his righteousness, and what happens is uh, his, your sin goes to the cross. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat, brothers. I, I appreciate you guys. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Go ahead and turn there. Verse 18 says, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Like I said earlier, there is two versions of Jesus, the real and the fake one. You have your works-based, long-haired, cross-dressing, drag queen, love flowers and rainbows, fake, good, be good all your life and you'll go to heaven style Jesus that is not biblical or the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus that I believe on said I'm saved and sealed unto the day of redemption. That's what he says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 through 14 says once you believe the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection, the Bible says you are sealed with the Holy Ghost unto the day of redemption. Amen. Once sealed, always sealed. Once saved, always saved. Amen. The God of the KJV, the King James Version of the Bible, is a different God than the, than the, the God of the LSB. He's a different God than the God of the NIV or the ESV. These perversions have contradictions and they cause people to believe a different gospel than the gospel of the KJV. And if you understand how we got the KJV today, you understand that this is God's preserved word. So that trumps, the KJV trumps what any other Bible says, period. You know, the Bible says things like, uh, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I'm paraphrasing. I don't know where that's at, but I've read it, and I know it's there. And these people that believe in the, the, the fake Jesus, the fake God, they believe if you backslide, you can lose salvation. That's not the gospel of the KJV, though. The gospel is, if you, they'll say the gospel is if you backslide, you can lose salvation. That's not the gospel. That's something that troubles you. If you think you backslide, if you get saved and you get into some kind of sin, it, they'll say that, well, that means you're not saved. I mean, it doesn't make sense. And you know what? I'm going to shut that crap down right now. Go ahead and go to Hebrews chapter 10. We'll be looking at verse 39. Lose your salvation. I mean, I'm having righteous anger. Please don't misunderstand this for me being a jerk or arrogant because I have passion for the lost. We, we in this church love the lost, and we know how serious it is that people are dying and going to hell, and they're believing on Jesus, but they're not believing in the right one because these people steered them wrong, and it's sad. It's scary. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39 says, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. When we draw back or backslide or sin, we don't draw back and go to hell. <laughs> we don't lose your salvation if you backslide. We don't draw back unto perdition. 
Because we believe in the saving of the soul. We believe we are saved and sealed. <laughs> Loss of salvation. That's the Antichrist's religion. The spirit of these Bible versions are the spirit of Antichrist. They aid false prophets in creating what's called apostates. And apostates are the ones that when the Antichrist and Satan come, that'll help the whole world be deceived by these guys. They'll be pointing to, to the Antichrist being like, that's the second coming of Jesus, or that's the first coming of the Messiah. And in the end times, the apostates are going to believe the Antichrist is Jesus. The Jews will believe it's the Messiah. The Muslims are going to believe it's their Messiah figure. The Buddhists are going to believe it's his Messiah figure. The list goes on. And they will all receive the mark of the beast and become reprobated. And it's sad. And I know that Antichrist is a person that is probably not around today, but is a character that shows up in the end times. Okay, I, I, I understand that. But the Bible says there are many antichrists in the world, whereby we know it's the last times. That was written 2,000 years ago. It's 2,000 years later, and we have many antichrists. We have atheists that are not just atheists. They're anti-theists. I mean, it's almost, like they're it's almost like their religion to hate God. Not just not accept that he's real, but just to outright hate him. It's... A weird phenomenon. And they'll, they'll, they'll debunk some Muslims sometimes, some Buddhists sometimes, but they primarily focus on attacking Jesus Christ. They're not atheists, they're anti-theists. They hate God with a passion. And about uh, people... Uh, creeping in in the chairs and, and, and or in the churches and Paul saying that, you know, uh, there are many antichrists whereby we know it's the last time and everything. The Jews crept in the church and Paul said that they trouble you. Some of the Jews were teaching that the church needs to be, people in the church need to be circumcised and do all these works, even denying the Lord that bought them, the Bible says. It's damnable heresy. And what do we see today? All these Protestants, Catholics, and different denominations teaching damnable heresy. So the title of my sermon should actually be, be Believe on the Devil and Thou Shalt Be Damned. And in the future, the devil will use the Antichrist to deceive the world into taking the mark of the beast. And once they do that, just like once saved, always saved, once you're damned, you're always damned. And that should scare us even more to give the gospel to people. Because there can come a point where the Bible says a person will be blotted out of the, the book of life. And there's many examples. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, taking the mark of the beast, creating a corrupted Bible, uh, you know, denying the gospel. These are all things that cause someone to be a reprobate, what the Bible calls a reprobate anyway. And past, pu past future, and, uh, yeah, excuse me guys, the uh, past future, Present and future sins are forgiven, all right? But they will use verses out of context, and I call that tactic manipulations 1-1. One, one. I can do all things through a verse taken out of context. These false prophets protect pedophiles. The Pope, the Catholic Church, John McLuire, or John McLucifer, pedophile freaks. This is what Jesus thinks of pedophiles and people who offend little children. Go to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. You ever notice that all these apostates, <laughs> they go after children. I mean, and they give Christianity a horrible bad name. Well, you know what the, 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 the God of the KJV says about pedophiles and people who offend little children? This is what Jesus himself said. And whoso, in verse, in verse 5, says, And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. 
Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man whom the offense cometh. Jesus doesn't like people who offend little children in any way. Sexually, whatever. Jesus loves the little children. John McLucifer defends child sex offenders. Did you guys know that? We don't let those sickos near our kids at this church. If, for example, Jerry Molester Berryman were to come walking through that door, I don't care, I would throw him out myself. And I know all of you would too. And we wouldn't be wrong in doing so either. Pastor Thompson is a great man of God, and he told us that Jerry Molester Berryman is not welcome. He has trespassed from this church. You know why? Because Pastor Thompson is a man of God. He's a pastor that actually cares about his flock. He actually cares about all of you. John MacArthur, he has proven to everyone by, by siding with a, a convicted pedophile and kicking that family out of their church and defending the pedophile, he has proven to everyone, and look, I don't care that, uh, obviously John MacArthur is not saved because he doesn't believe salvation, but his flock might not be saved either. But I don't care about that. I care about the fact that he's proven to everyone that he does not care about his flock. He will not protect his own flock. What's that say about that man? John MacArthur should stop reading his fake Bibles and grab a KJV and turn to page or uh, turn to book of Second Chronicles and look at cha- uh, verse 19 or chapter 19 verse 2. Second Chronicles chapter 19 verse 2. Go ahead and turn there in your Bibles. It's in the Old Testament. If you if you find Kings, you're you're, you're kind of in 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 that. You're, you're close to Second Chronicles. Hmm. Second Chronicles, chapter nineteen, verse two says, "And Jehu." the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. That's what the Bible says about people who want to help ungodly people. Not just like heathen and and, and lost people. No. Help them that hate the Lord. You know, when you realize the reprobate doctrine is, is because people have been given over to a reprobate mind, as Romans 1 says, that they are haters of God. So why is John MacArthur, a so-called pastor, helping the ungodly? False prophet. Amen. That's just the truth. He's a false, wicked prophet. It says, shouldest thou help the ungodly, therefore is wrath upon you. John MacArthur is helping an ungodly person, and that's sad. He doesn't care about his flock. Well, my conclusion, though, is that John MacArthur is a reprobate himself. My biggest, my biggest proof of this is that He invented his own translation of the Bible. And we all know what God says about changing the Bible. John MacArthur has God's wrath and anger on him. And John uh, McLeir will go to hell when he dies. And so will T.D. Jakes. So will Joel Osteen. Joyce Myers. Kirk Cameron. uh, Kenneth Copeland. Ray Comfort, all these guys. You name it, dude. If they're 
he ain't saved and that are not saved and they're preaching that false gospel, the Bible says let them be accursed. And 90% of these so-called pastors at these churches in Yakima are deceived and being deceived, or are deceiving and being deceived. Does that make sense? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. While I get this point across, I want to say they teach another gospel, the devil's gospel. And who's the devil's version of the Messiah? Antichrist. They believe in Antichrist, not Jesus Christ. Any Christian that teaches works have anything to do with salvation is not a Christian, but a Christian falsely so called. They say, Lord, Lord, they have a book that is falsely so called a Bible. They have a building that's called a church, but it's not a church. It's the synagogue of Satan. Where where they deceive and are being deceived Sunday after Sunday, week after week, month after month, year after year. They become so brainwashed. <laughs> they, 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 they become twofold more the, the child of hell than even the false prophets themselves. And if you don't know this, the Bible talks about Jesus saying those words that to the Pharisees that you go and make one pro when you when you go and make one uh, a, a convert that you make them twofold more the child of hell than yourselves it means that they're double brainwashed more than the false prophet i mean that's just what the bible teaches second timothy chapter 3 says this know also that in the last days second timothy chapter 3 yeah. this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy without natural affection it's not natural to lust in your heart after a, a, a little one it's not natural to lust in your heart for the same um, yeah, and it's not natural to lust in your heart to want to commit murders, you know? It's just not natural. They don't have natural affection. They don't have empathy. They lack empathy. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, Heady, mind, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. They look like they're godly. They act like they're Christian. They look like they're Christian. But denying the power thereof. Last time I checked, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So they reject that. From such, turn away. Don't listen to them, the Bible's saying. From these types of people, John MacArthur, Ray Comfort, all these, all these guys, run away from them. Turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning, which they're constantly learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Atheists and all these people, they're always reading their physics books, they're always reading their, their, their science books, they're always reading, and they're reading, and they're learning, and they're learning, and all these false prophets, they're reading, they're going through scripture, they're, 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 they're learning, and learning, and learning, and learning, and they have all this knowledge, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They could learn for thousands and thousands of years and still never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jamborees, we're in verse 8. Now as Janus and Jamborees withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, think psychopaths, they're, they're missing that frontal lobe cortex. They have no conscience. And that's actual science, not, not what I'm saying. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. That means damned. 
but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. So we're outwardly warned. When we see an out and proud person, we know, okay, that person's far gone. You know, we see uh, reprobate false prophets, they'll preach a gospel that's not the real gospel. That's how we know. That's how their folly is made manifest to all men. And in verse 10 says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, peace, uh, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came to me in Antioch, at Isonium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The religious late leaders... Today, hate the real gospel. They attack once saved, always saved. Uh, they hated Jesus back then. And you know what? If you're serving God, all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Just get ready for it. It's going to happen. And then it says in verse 13, e But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They go around lying to each other. Hey, did you know this? Did you know that? Oh, and they're lying to each other, believing those lies, repeating those lies, believing those lies, repeating those lies. They're deceiving and being deceived. Hey, did you know that God's real name is this? Or, you know, all these weird doctrines. <laughs> it's insane. Just some of the stuff you hear on TikTok, it's like, are these guys really students of the Bible, or are they just blurting out things from other TikToks they've seen? Reprobate false prophets like John McLucifer are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They deceive and are being deceived. You see, these false prophets can be physical perverts, but they're also spiritually perverts. And let me explain. Spiritually, they are not so different than a kidnapper that wants to kidnap somebody and kill them. They kidnap you with the lies that... Uh, they, they pervert a person's faith. That's how they, they, they pervert, instead of physically pervert to somebody, they, they pervert the gospel. They pervert someone's faith. And the end result is, their message sends someone to hell forever. That's worse than murder. They pull up in a white van called church. <laughs> they approach the lost and babes in Christ and say, want to see some puppies? The puppy of a different Bible version? The lollipop sucker of a false gospel? Want to suck your guys? The balloons of the Antichrist, not Jesus Christ. And once they have that, the lot, once they have the lost convinced, they hop into the reprobate bus and they're on their highway to hell. Where there is gnashing of teeth and the worm dieth not. Satan's false messiah, the Antichrist, will someday come to the, do the devil's bidding in the end times. And guess what? All the Jews that worship Satan, all the apostates that worship the fake Jesus will believe on him and be sealed with the mark of the beast and become reprobates and be damned forever. After a person takes the mark of the beast, they become permanently damned. That's what reprobate means. John MacArthur made his own Bible. He is damned. He is a reprobate. That's why he has, uh, that's why he is a false prophet, and that's why he believes a saved person can take the mark of the beast. He's trying to prep the, the future apostates for their Messiah, the Antichrist. That's why he defends homos and pedos, and that's why he defends reprobates, because he is one. It all makes sense. By the way, even apostates know that you can't take. I've heard, I've heard preaching from, from people who aren't saved, and, and they know that if you take the mark of the beast, you're done. They, they know that. That's common knowledge. John MacArthur is literally like the only Christian that I've heard say that you can take the mark of the beast and chop your hand off or chop your head off and still go to heaven. I mean, he's the only one that, that teaches that. I mean, I know there's nothing new under the sun, but that was very new for me to learn. 
If somebody says that they are a Christian, yeah, they believe in Jesus, that he is God and he is Lord. They'll say Lord, Lord, but they did not believe on him. They did not accept his sacrifice. They denied that after one is saved, that they're permanently saved. They teach you can lose it. If you believe you can lose it, you end up doing good works to stay saved. Do you see how they're duping you guys? They, they, they teach you to do good works to stay saved. So what are you ultimately trusting? Oh, well, I better keep doing good works or God's not going to let me get into heaven. You're, you're on your way to hell because guess what? They've duped you into trusting in you and not Jesus Christ. Therefore, you're not saved. I'm exposing these guys. And, yeah, they'll say, Lord, Lord, have I not done many wonderful works? They believe he is Lord, but they didn't believe on him. It's just belief. They believe, Cody. They believe that Jesus is God. Yeah, they believe that. The Bible's saying don't believe he exists or acknowledge he is Lord, Lord, or acknowledge he is God. Yeah, you have to do that, too, like to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah, obviously, but they don't trust in Jesus. They don't believe on him, his sacrifice, his death, his burial, and resurrection to save them. They don't believe that. They don't believe that Jesus paid for all of their sins. Being saved is, I mean, for, for lack of a better example, is no different than like a video game, okay? I know most of us probably don't play video games, and, uh, and this might sound a little weird, but bear with me a little in my folly, I guess. Uh, if you save your, your, your file on your video game and the game turns off, your file is still there when you turn it back on. The works-based salvation, they have no save option in the main menu. And so what happens is they turn off that video game and when they turn it back on, they're at square zero. Their progress is not saved. It's the same difference. Saved means saved. It doesn't mean, you know, what these people think it means. And I say all this because I want to warn you. If I didn't care, I'd say let the wolves have them, honestly. But I do care. I care about all of you. I care about the people watching. I care about the people I've gotten saved, and then they're duped by this false prophet. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The Bible's telling us right there that Satan will disguise himself as an angel of light, and it's no wonder that even his ministers will do the same. You know, their ministers might stand up here and be like, God loves everybody. We don't yell like those Baptists. We're, we're not mean-spirited. We're kind and gentle. But you know what? If, if, you, if, you, if you sin, you'll lose your salvation. They're worse than us. <laughs> They're way worse. They... I'd rather be punched in the face with the truth than to be kissed with a lie. And that's just, that's just how I am personally. And you know what? If the truth offends you, it's probably good for you because you can learn for it. My dad, my parents, they didn't spank me just to be, for me to hate them. They spanked me because they wanted me to be corrected. If this is convicting you tonight because you're listening to a false wolf and recommending that false wolf to other Christians, maybe shame on you and maybe you can correct that in your life and get it done with. Right here in Yakima... We're out soul winning, and I found this tent revival track, okay? And it says June 14th through the 18th, come to this tent revival. I don't know if you guys know who Billy Graham is. He was also a false prophet, but he did those big old tent things where you would preach a sermon, and all these people from different denominations would try to give their versions of the gospel to people, whatever, you know? It's kind of like that, but what's funny about this is that they have this clown called Isaiah Sal Saldivar. Who knows who Isaiah Saldivar is? Good. Uh, yep. Cassidy Campbell was 
you know, he's constantly attacking them on Instagram and stuff like that. But he's, he's a wicked false prophet. He's like, I don't know how if somebody thinks it's a gift that you could lose that gift. And he's just twisting things and manipulating people into believing this false doctrine. And he's coming to Yakima to preach this revival at this tent revival. And there's a Christian rapper who I have a video after the service if you want to see it. He talks about how you have to repent of all your sins or you're not saved. And this Christian rapper goes by the name Brian Treo. And Brian Treo is a false prophet heretic, and they call him Pastor Treo. <laughs> Wicked. Ephesians 4, verse 14 says, That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. The Bible says that we shouldn't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. And I, it doesn't say every wind of true doctrine, but it doesn't say every wind of false doctrine. It says every wind of doctrine. I've been to the Salvation Army where sometimes they're like, yo, you know, they'll say something true and everyone's like, amen. And then they'll contradict that truth and be like, yeah, but you could like lose your, your, your salvation. Just for an example, uh, they'll say one day they'll say, and this is just an example because they don't believe once saved, always saved. That's why I left that church. But Salvation Army will be like, oh yeah, once saved, always saved. Everyone says, amen. You can lose your salvation. Amen. And they're just tossed to and fro with all these crazy lies and they believe everything. There's such things as reprobates. Amen. There's no such things as reprobates. Amen. They're just tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. The Bible doesn't want us to be tossed to and fro like that. That's why you got to study your Bible and show yourself to be approved, right? <laughs> it's just, it's, it's crazy to me. So today, let's go soul winning and show people the truth that these Jehovah's false witnesses and these latter-day Satanists have another Jesus and another gospel. I mean, the Book of Mormon literally says another testament of Jesus Christ. There is not another testament. Okay? There's not another gospel. There's one gospel or there's a perversion of the gospel. I've showed you that this morning. So let's go show everyone in Yakima they have been lied to and get them to stop trusting the fake Christ, the Antichrist, the mainstream falsely so-called Christianity, and believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. Amen? Amen? Let's go soul winning today. Let's wake people up. Show them that they've been lied to, and let's give them the truth that God loves them, and if they believe on Jesus, God loves them. God says he'll never leave or forsake them. Let's go show everybody in Yakima. Let's go knock these doors and show people they've been lied to. Let's go knock these doors and show people the truth. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's pray. Lord, I just pray that this sermon touched people's hearts, woke people up, that they understand that not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, and has a suit and tie on is, is an actual Christian, Lord. I pray that, that you give a heart to everyone this morning, that they uh, test the spirits, try the spirits, Lord and see whether or they, they are not whether or not they are of you, Lord. And I pray that we get some souls saved today, Lord. I pray this sermon had fired some of our men up to go out, out there and preach the gospel, Lord. Thank you for another day, and thank you for our, our new guests, Lord. And uh, We pray that they keep coming back, Lord. We, we love Brother Noah, and, and we'd like to get to know his family, too. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Turn to page 518. 518 in your hymn books. What a great sermon. Salvation is so simple. It's, it's people that twist it and pervert it that confuse people. And so praise the Lord for a clear, clear-cut gospel. 518, over the Sunset Mount. Dismiss. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for that great uh, sermon that made uh, salvation clear. And that's how it ought to be, dear Lord. And Father, we pray that you would take care of all these false prophets in the world, Lord. We know you got your eye on them, and there's nothing done that you don't see. And Lord, be with us now also as we go out so many today and we meet here at 145, be with us, Lord, that we could see some souls saved today. We pray 